shoot. I don't think I have any boxes to open anymore. What am I gonna do? <laughs> bye bye. Where'd you get this? It was in the mail. It was in the mail? Sweet, we got a box to unbox. All right, scram. All right, perfect timing. Uh, I actually didn't have any boxes to open for a little while. Kinda was concerned about content, but check it out. Surprise mail delivery. I did not order this box. Uh, I don't even know where it came from. I have not been emailed by any reps that I was getting a box. It just showed up on my doorstep. So if you guys remember, I reviewed this box back in June. It's on the channel, I'll link it somewhere up here and in the description. But this is the Premier Bait Box, which is, I guess, a newer one. Uh, the Premier is actually, it says on the website, normally $40, but on sale for $28.95. I don't know if that's like a permanent sale or what, but we're gonna crack this bad boy open. We're gonna see what's in it. So, hey, before we do that, welcome to Burly Fishing. If you like the content, unboxing, reviews, and fishing videos, consider subscribing to the channel, smash that like, ring that notification bell, and stay tuned for more content three days a week. Let's get after this thing. Double taped, woof. That, that premium tab, that thing is super thick. What do we got, what do we got, what do we got? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where they got this idea, but we got snacks. I think snacks in the box is a pretty rad idea. I think beef jerky is probably the most appropriate thing to throw in the box. I think you might run into issues if, for example, like with the Tackle Monkey box, you threw in like chocolate or something else. If somebody has like peanut allergies or chocolate, they're allergic to chocolate, I don't know. Gosh forbid you're allergic to chocolate, that'd be rough but you might run into some problems if you send somebody some food they're allergic to. However, jerky is kind of a common boat snack and maybe one that you're safest with. So we got some lumberjack jerky, Minnesota. Minnesota, nice. <laughs> Minnesota, nice, the original, the original beef jerky. Smells tasty. That's good jerky. Okay, other than that, we got confetti, neat, be sweeping that up later. I don't remember if they had this last time, but we got a bait card here. So the Premier Bass Box, looks like we got seven things in here. Sweet, okay. We got a secret bait box koozie, sweet. Last time they sent me a shirt, now I can wear my shirt and my koozie. Okay, and then we got some stuff, we got some things. Let's do this. You know the drill, we'll go bait by bait. I'll tell you my instant opinion. If I can fish it this week, I'll give you an on the water review. If not, I'll put it in the tank. I'll do something with it. Full disclosure, as I said, I got this box for free. These are my opinions, take them or leave them. I live in Michigan, so you gotta understand that my opinion is kind of based on the waters I fish. So stay tuned, let's go through it. And then in the comments, of course, let me know what you guys think as well. That's very important to me. I wanna know your first reaction. I wanna know if you slay on baits that I don't like. That helps out a lot. You guys hit me up in an MTB video a while back and told me that Uzuri was dope. And then I gave it a chance, fishing on the water, caught a PB pike. That's how community works. Let's roll. Okay, so first off, Okay, so it's November. So you know my opinion on topwater baits. I know you guys down south are fishing these though, but I've never fished this type of bait. I think this is a newer Lunker Hunt too, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the Lunker Hunt Poppin' Bug, which should be more of like a foam style bait. Now, i give you guys fair warning. I know the type of material here I'm gonna talk about in a second. I like this color though. Yeah, this material is kind of dope. Check it out. So we got cupped mouth, right? Neat. You got your little hook placement area in the bottom. And then you got this sort of like water bug design. It's supposed to be water bug, right? Oh, this includes a hook. I almost threw this hook away. Are you kidding me? Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. So as you guys can see, we can rig this thing weedless with the included hook. Looks like we get like a three-aught EWG, which is cool. Fine by me. So the way you rig it is you go in through the mouth, right through that center hole in there, push it down, pop that hook out right into that hook hiding area, run it up to the eye of the hook, and then turn it around like your Texas rigging a bug. And then we bring that hook right back through, got our hook right up on top, and then we just bury that hook back into our bug. 
kind of cool. Nice, like, plush, squishy plastic. I like that. Uh, plastic or whatever the heck material this is made out of, I don't know. You got your little line tie in there. As far as the skirt, we got some black and some chartreuse, some bright color skirtage there. And yeah, I mean, I, th I think it's a, a pretty unique bait, one that I don't have, one that I am interested to throw, one that shall sit by itself in my tackle box until topwater season next year, probably. Um, but nonetheless, like this giant water bug with a frog pattern to it. Kind of like it. Something I'll throw later on. Maybe you guys down south, if you're looking for something like this, there you go. You can throw something right now. Fair warning, I had like the dragonfly, which is made out of the same hyper durable material. Do not let it touch other plastics. It will melt. Mine melted itself in half. So full disclosure, store this separately in your tackle bin or in the original packaging only, all right? So next bait we got, we actually have a Lunker Hunt lipless bait. Lipless, great this time of year. This is something I can definitely throw. This is the Lunker Hunt Reactor Impact Series. Boom. Not a bad looking lipless. I will say, full disclosure, I remember this being on Paul's least favorite baits list on the Burley Fishing Podcast. Go like and subscribe or check us out every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. I can't remember why, and I've actually never fished this bait specifically. I've fished the Kraken Series, which... You know, honestly, comparing the two, this one looks a heck of a lot better than the Kraken series does. So, I don't know. We're just going to have to take it out on the water, see what it's all about. Initial reaction, though, for me, it's a decent looking lipless. Not too bad. Seems to be built pretty well. Does have some like light wire trebles. We'll see how they hold up. This color, which they call Silver Side. Looks pretty good, and I mean, this size, like the small to medium lipless size, is definitely something I'm throwing right now. And then we've got an interesting heavy thud with tinny rattle combo going on, so it's a super loud bait. Interesting nonetheless, definitely more appropriate for me this time of season. Again, maybe you guys are throwing the pop and bug right now, that's cool, it's just not something I can throw in Michigan right now. All right, then we go with the classic the Rapala DT4. So what we have here with the Rapala DT4 is a four foot diving crankbait. These things are made really well. They fish really well. It's got this cool little scale pattern here that's gonna have like some reflective properties there. And then this color I believe is called Smash. That's what it said. So this is Smash color. We're gonna smash some fishies. And all around, I mean, it's a Rapala. It's a straight classic. Looks good to me. Something I would definitely throw around right now if I'm seeing bass suspending at like that four foot depth or shallow and I'm gonna hammer them on this. Love the size of this crank too. Definitely something I would throw at the moment. Still got four things left in here. So these things I've used in the past. Now I'm not super stoked about them. This is the VMC skirted Nico weight. Uh, let me know if you guys have used these before. I have had some luck on them. I think it's definitely a cool modification you can make to your Nico rigs. However, the problem I've had with them is that they are not durable. They do not hold up. You should not store them with your other tackle, in other words. So you've got a lead nail weight, which has a threaded skirt going through the base of it, right? So you stab this right up into your worm. You've got that Nico rigged, and in this case, we have a PB&J color. So you got the purples, the browns, and the blacks in there, which is a pretty sweet color to be thrown around with like a darker color worm. So that said, that looks pretty good. The issue I've had is actually, look, this one's already kind of got it, is that they'll sort of bend like that, and this being a lead weight, mind you, a very weak lead weight, is they just break. They just break off. Um, I've had it happen while putting it into a worm, I've had this thing break in half. So that is one issue I've had. They're also not cheap. <laughs> they're they're kind of expensive. For two little nail weights, they're, they're a little expensive. Uh, but nonetheless, like I said, a unique thing that you can do with your Nico rigs. If you're not getting bites, you want to change it up. I love fishing skirted jigs right now. A skirted worm is definitely another cool thing that you can throw around in the fall. I think you'll get some bites on it. So that is dope. However, Maybe my favorite thing in this box right now is this bad boy right here. So we got the Tokyo rig with a flipping hook. 
So the Tokyo rig, if you guys are not familiar with it, is a super unique style base. There's obviously a million different styles out there, different ways that you could get this thing, but check this out. What you have here is this split ring. Chill, 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 chill. You got a barrel swivel above that, and then you've got this wire that comes down. Now, one common thing that I hear about this is you can make your own. Yes, you can make your own a lot of things. It's more of a question of convenience. Do you just buy the one that's already rigged, ready to go, or do you make your own? And that's gonna be split. Like some people are all about making their own. I've made my own baits recently, and I can say it's pretty rewarding to catch fish on things that you've made. But it's whether or not you wanna put the time and effort into making it, that matters. That said, if you wanna make this, all you need is a split ring, some wire, a barrel swivel, which are basically free, and then the hook that you're gonna use. So it's super easy to make. However, I prefer to buy these. I just, I just buy these. I'll make other things, I'll buy these. What makes this bait so cool is that on this wire right here, that wire, you're gonna go ahead and just rig some of your normal weights, flipping weights, worm weights, doesn't matter, lead, tungsten, your choice. Uh, and then you're just gonna fold this wire. You literally take your pliers, bend the wire, around the bottom weight, and it's gonna hold that weight on there. And what that's gonna do for you is you'll rig your plastic right here, and you can actually let it just sit on the bottom, but it's now sitting a couple inches off of the bottom, and your plastic's gonna kinda just float there. I prefer to use more buoyant plastics for this, like a Z-Man worm, a Z-Man trick worm, uh, you know, maybe something with a little less salt in it, like a beaver style bait. I love the missile baits D-bomb, that's something I love to throw on these things too. And you know, you're gonna rig it like you normally would on a flipping hook. So you're gonna Texas rig it, hide the hook in the bait, there you go. Then you're just gonna let it sit on the bottom. You're gonna pop it around, you're gonna lift and swing it, you're gonna swim it if you want to. That's kind of a cool option that you can have. You can rig two weights to this, and because of the space, they'll actually kind of clack together whenever you pop the rod. That's a unique option. Man, I just, I love Tokyo rigging. Something I definitely do spring and fall a lot. Uh, when the vegetation's kind of down, it'll be easier to do it in more areas at that time. So try it out if you haven't before. Cool that they included that in this box. That's like, that's two pieces of unique terminal tackle you don't normally get in a box. So kudos to this company for doing that. Then we got Obate. Obate. I remember they had Obate a bag of Obate curly tail worms in the last box I got in June. So this is a company they must deal with a lot. Uh, but we got a, a pearl fluke. In this case, they call it a minnow. But it's a fluke style plastic. There you go. You got a little belly to it. You got your fork tail right there. You got tons and tons of action because of that. And we can rig these a ton of different ways. Typically right now, you could donkey rig these with two of them. You could go weightless. You could go Texas rig style with a super lightweight, I prefer. You could rig it on a swim jig. You got a thousand different options, and we will definitely be trying to get out on the water with this. As temps drop, I had like this really weird, super warm week this week. Uh, but as temperatures drop, this is something that I'm definitely throwing a lot around those finicky bass. Between that and this next one, it's probably like the best luck we got. You could throw that on the Tokyo rig too. Um, Tokyo rig, we got a three-aught flipping hook, maybe two, kind of too thick for that tiny of a fluke. Uh, but if I have a bigger fluke, which I do, it's got some elastic flukes from Z-Man that we might rig up to that. That could be pretty cool. And then we got this Power Team Lures. It's called the Food Chain Tube Delta Destroyer. Uh, 3.5 inch food chain tube. Why is it called food chain? Serious baits for serious fishermen says right there. So I guess I better get serious. Oh, that's why. So we have some juice or in this case what they call hog tonic. Okay. So we got our tonic. We got a, gosh, that is a weird looking tube. Oh, okay. So check this out. So this actually says that there's a hog tonic capsule inside, that'd be this, and it says you actually pour it into this bag, let it sit for a little bit, shake it up maybe, and uh, then go fish with it. Interesting. And then this tube, looks like this, sort of like this molten craw kind of color is what it reminds me of. You've got your, your typical little tentacles there, and then you've got the thicker appendages right here, two of those thicker appendages. So you got some, some neat action. 
throw this on a tube jig. Typically that's how we're gonna rig it or we'll rig it weedless on an EWG Texas rig it. I like to, I prefer to use that around heavier cover, but open hook tube jig is the typical style. You're gonna throw this on open water, just around grass and stuff like that. I'm gonna huck it out there, let it splash, let it sink down and uh, go for broke, see what happens. Not sure about like this plastic quality, quality, quality. Durability of the plastic may be a little bit suspect. It's like it's kind of melting a little bit on its own right there versus this one. Looks a little bit cleaner, but I do like this color. There's some nice blue flake in there, darker orange and brown. It's a tube, it's something we throw in fall. It should work. We're going to see what happens. All right. That's the box, you guys. So again, surprise box out of nowhere, automatic bonus points. Uh, although kind of strange because I didn't even get an email from the company like, hey, here's a box. We started selling these, $30 range. Review it? I don't know. So I'm just doing a review on my own because that's what I do, right? All right, so we got the tubes. They look decent. We got some flukes, always decent. We got one of my favorite things in the box. Those Tokyo rigs, three aught flipping hooks. We got the Rapala DT4. We got that popping bug, which we're automatically gonna place in a tackle box on its own. Then we got that Lunker Hunt Impact lipless bait and that silver side. And finally, we got those VMC Nico PBNJ skirted weights. Cool. All sorts of, oh, don't forget your hog tonic. Put that back in that bag. Don't wanna, don't wanna lose my hog tonic. Gosh forbid. All right guys, not a bad box for $28.95. Says it's normally 40. Again, I don't know if that's like a current sale, if that's an ongoing sale. I don't know what that means. And again, they didn't send me any details via email on this box. So we're just guessing, right? Oh yeah, beef jerky too. Don't forget that. They sent you a dang snack. So you got seven baits and a snack. This is literally a box that you might grab, walk to the water with it and a terminal box and go fish and have a good time. So again, all in all, not a bad box at all. It's from Outlet Bait and Tackle. It's called the Secret Bait Box. And I wanna know what you guys think. So at this point, go in the comments, let me know. What'd you think of the baits in this box? Would you throw, yes or no? Does this box seem decent for the price? I think it's all right. I think it's all right for sure. Um, I already got too many gosh dang boxes that I'm getting, so I'm not gonna add another subscription, but Thanks for sending it to me for free. I'll let bait and tackle. I appreciate you guys. And also don't forget your koozie. There's like just random things in there. I'm like, am I forgetting stuff? All right. Well, hey, hopefully you guys like this video. If you did, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Smash the like on this video. Ring that notification bell. Come hang out with us on Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern for the podcast live on YouTube and Twitch. And I will see you guys out on the water.